when you both went outside, you saw George Zimmerman in where and where was Trayvon Martin? She was out the door first. Um, when I came out the door, I saw him basically straddling him. He had, um, you know, feet on either side of his body and his hands, um, at the time I didn't know, was on his back. And Trayvon was face down. Trayvon was face down. Once he got off of the body, we could see that his face was down in the grass. So at the time that he was holding his back, um, I didn't know if he was trying to help him hold the wound or um, he wasn't. We, she, Selma had asked him several times, three times, what's going on? Is everything okay? And um, each time he looked at anything until the third time he just said, just call the police. Sounds like a male. And you don't know why? I don't know why I think they're yelling help, but I don't know. Just send someone quick. Say, ah. Okay. Does he look hurt? I can't see him. I don't want to go out there. I don't know what's going on. So they're sending. So you think he's yelling help? Yes. All right. What is your number? Just there's gunshots. You just heard gunshots? Yes. How many? And we don't know if they've been killed, okay? We know they've, they've probably have seen. He just said he shot him. Yeah, it's the person who's dead laying on the grass. I didn't see because it was too dark, and I just heard people screaming, help me. When you both went outside. When you both went outside. Look, her team. I can't see him. I don't want to go out there. I don't know what's going on. So. Look, her team. <laughs> I can't see him. I don't want to go out there. I don't know what's going on. So. You saw George Zimmerman in where and where was Trayvon Martin? She was out the door first. Um, when I came out the door, I saw him basically straddling him. He had, um, you know, feet on either side of his body and his hands, um, at the time I didn't know, was on his back. And Trayvon was face down. Trayvon was face down. Once he got off of the body, we could see that his face was down in the grass. So at the time that he was holding his back, um, I didn't know if he was trying to help him hold the wound or um, he wasn't. We, she, Selma had asked him several times, three times, what's going on? Is everything OK? And um, each time he looked back, but he didn't say anything until the third time he just said, just call the police. Is there gunshots? Yes. How many? And we don't know if they've been killed, okay? We know they probably have seen. He just said he shot him. Yeah, it's the person who's dead laying on the grass. I didn't see because it was too dark, and I just heard people screaming. Hey, what's going on with y'all, man? It's Black Balloon. And I'm coming back with another video, so y'all already know what's going on. This was the highly requested Trayvon Martin video. And, of course, I got a lot of the request from doing the Kendrick Johnson video two weeks ago. So, as always, y'all already know I'm going to come through with the video, man. Um, and just like the last video, I'm going to just be coming in a couple times, break down what's going on, because obviously I can give y'all a way better picture of what I'm trying to get across by actually explaining it. So, starting off with the um, with the two women that were the you know supposed witnesses to to the murder, or they just... You know, they heard what was going on outside of their apartment or their home where um, it looked like apartments. I'm not really not really sure. So um, 
right off back, there are a bunch of inconsistencies. Clearly, they lied about how things went down as far as what they saw and what was said when they supposedly went outside. Now, in the in the clip where she's um, talking to Anderson, um, she tells him, which is why I put listen again, you got to listen closely, or if you just listen and just listen, you're not really going to hear it. You know, because she clearly says that, um, to me, she kind of had like two mistakes, two mistakes where she said they asked Zimmerman or, you know, they stepped outside and they asked, are you OK? What's going on? Three times. Notice that number three. So she actually said they asked. They wanted to know what was going on. But Zimmerman just looked at them or something like that and ultimately told them to call 911. When clearly, when she was actually on the phone call with 911, she said she wasn't outside. She didn't want to go outside because she didn't know what was going on. Basically, she was scared. And the gunshot actually went off while she was on the phone with 911. So how, how did she ask Zimmerman, is he okay? Is everything fine? And then he doesn't answer, but tells her, go and call 911. After Trayvon is supposedly laying there dead. So you see the inconsistency. You see the lies off back already. Already the story don't add up. She told him, Anderson Cooper, as if I hadn't called 911 yet. I called 911 basically after I asked Zimmerman, was everything okay? He was already shot. He says, call 911. But... <laughs> She was already on 911 on the call when the gunshot went off. So y'all see what I'm trying to point out to you. Right off back as we start the video, we already get conflicting stories of what actually went down. And then it's odd how they say that Trayvon was laying on his face, right? And then I actually found these pictures which I put in the video and I blurred it out a little bit for the sake of YouTube. You know, I wasn't really sure if I was really going to put that in there. But, you know, with it blurry, I should be OK. And with me, I'm not going to click on this picture right here where he, where his body, the front of his head is highlighted in green. And I'm just kind of keep it far away from the screen so I can hopefully pass by showing this. But this is to give you a visual of what they're basically saying. Now, these are these are um, these are real pictures. These are real case files. Now, this is somehow a picture of him laying down on his face here in the grass. And then the thing is, we get we get other pictures, other crime scene pictures. Here's more of him laying down on his face. This one is him on his back and he's in the hangman pose, the pose that basically relates back to Freemasonry. It's called the hangman. You can look it up. I'm actually trying to find a picture where it shows it a little bit closer. Um, that he's kind of like in the hangman pose. I don't want to. I don't want to actually blow it up on the screen, but I may just blur it. You can, you can kind of see it right here. His his leg is like crossed up under his other leg. You know that's that that's the picture right there, right there. Where his leg is crossed over his leg. That's the hangman Freemasonic pose. And now you notice his body was actually turned. So like where where I, I didn't hear anything about you know um it I don't know, I don't know. It, it it would be odd for them to turn the body over and then his legs to be in that kind of shape. You know, it just doesn't seem it doesn't seem right. It's like, why, is, why Why do we get basically crime scene pictures of him like this on his face, as the woman says, and then we also get pictures of him like that on his back with his leg crossed up under him. So it's like, well, who flipped the body over? Who turned the body over? You see what I'm saying? So even that, that's odd in itself right there. You know, like, wh where does that happen on crime scenes? Usually the body just stays the place that it is, you know? 
if it's face down or, you know, face up or whatever, the body just stays just like that. So I found that to be pretty odd. And what we're also going to go into next is we're going to listen to George Zimmerman basically explain his version, his like reenactment. He went back to the scene on how everything happened. So he's basically going to contradict what the two women, what the two women said on the 911 call. He's going to basically say that someone came out. He told them that he needed help. And then that the woman said they're going to call 911. So we're basically going to see how right off back nothing adds up. So with that being said, let's get into this next clip. She got on top of me somewhere around here. And uh, that's when I started screaming for help. I started screaming help, help as loud as I could. And uh, then is when he grabbed me. Oh, I, I tried to sit up, and that's when he grabbed me by the head and tried to slam my head down. And were you on the, I guess were you on the cement? Or were you on the no, my body was on the grass. My head was on the cement. You can see the best of the face on this one. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, that's as best as I could feel through my okay. jacket. Mm -hmm. it was I felt like my body was on the grass and my head was on the cement, and he just kept slamming and slamming. And. Uh, I just, I kept yelling, help, 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 as loud as I could. He put his hand on his nose, no, on my nose, and his other hand on my mouth. He said, shut the fuck up. And uh, then I tried squirming again, because all I could think about was when he was hitting my head against it, it felt like my head was going to explode, and I thought I was going to lose consciousness. So I tried to squirm so that I could get, because he, he only had a small portion of my head on the concrete. So I tried to squirm off the concrete. And when I did that, somebody here opened the door and I said, help me, help me. And they said, I'll call 911. I said, and I said, help me, help me. And they said, I'll call 911. I said, Wait, she, Salma had asked him several times, three times, what's going on? Is everything okay? And um, each time he looked back, but he didn't say anything until the third time he just said, just call the police. Said, no, help me. I need help. And I don't know what they did, but, uh... I don't know what they did, but, uh... That's when my jacket had moved up and I had my, my firearm on my right side hip. My jacket moved up. My jacket moved up. And he saw it. I feel like he saw it. He looked at it and he said, You're gonna die tonight, motherfucker. You're gonna die tonight, motherfucker. And he reached for it, but he reached... Like, I felt his arm going down to my side. And I grabbed it, and I just grabbed my firearm, and I shot him one time. After you shot him, keep on going. What did he say? After I shot him, he, like, sat up. So you're, you're, you're still in this position here, basically. Yes, you're sir. down here. I shot him, so he's in the breast. Yes, sir. He was on top of me like okay. this. I shot him. And I didn't think I hit him, because he sat up, and he said, Oh, you got me. You got it. You got me. You got it. Something like that. So I thought he was just saying... I know you have a gun now, I heard it, I'm giving up. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if I pushed him off me or he fell off me. Either way, I got on top of him and I pushed his arms apart. And I said, Did you flip him over? I don't remember That's how fine. I got on top of him, I'm sorry. That's fine. But I got on his back and I moved his arms apart because when he was repeatedly hitting me in the face and the, the head, I thought he had something in his hands. And so I just, I, I moved his hands apart. Uh, so you had him face down then? Yes, face down and I was on his back. All right, y'all. So y'all see how the stories are not adding up. And quick side note, is um, it's crazy I found this picture of um, Zimmerman, Trayvon's dad, and I forget who this dude is to the left right here, how they're all holding that, um, that Freemasonic triangle sign up. So it goes to show you what kind of, what um, Zimmerman is actually connected to and the fact that his dad, is actually um, a judge in the state of Florida. And Zimmerman is actually part fluish, as they say. Um, I can't say the J word. He is part fluish and um, Peruvian, I think. Um, so he's not just a man of Hispanic descent. But anyway, so y'all see how, um, 
y'all see how the stories basically don't add up. So we got to listen for those small details to understand that this is, you know, in my eyes, it's all a big lot. You know, I, every time I do these kind of videos and, you know, we go over the 911 calls, which I'm going to get to the 911 call um, that Zimmerman made as well. You know, we go over all this stuff. We can point out the inconsistencies and and hear that this shit is being made up. They're, they're giving us a story. I always come at y'all with these videos with a really open mind. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I have an open mind to begin with, but then I'm also trying to make you see the fact that all of this shit could be a lie, bro. You know, none of this shit could even be true. You see, you see what I'm saying? Like, the way they giving us the story, you know, like, we weren't there. You know what I'm saying? Like, we could see pictures and shit all day long of what we think is Trayvon Martin and that, you know, we think this is how he died. What if that's not even Trayvon Martin? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because I was trying to find this collage picture. It's like a picture. It's a it's a bunch of pictures of Trayvon when he's younger. And then um, it's also a bunch of pictures of his brother. And they're all kind of like they're all kind of collaged together. And I swear it looks like the same exact person. You see what I'm saying? Um now there is pictures of of Trayvon and his brother in the same pic, but we can't even be sure that those photos weren't, you know, photoshopped to have Trayvon in the picture because the brother doesn't even seem like he knows Trayvon and I'm going to play that interview as well. A super awkward interview of some random news lady interviewing the brother and y'all going to trip out when y'all see the brother like responses to him supposedly knowing Trayvon. It, when he testified in court, he said, um, you know, him and Trayvon, they were real close. And then when they got to this interview, he knew he didn't know what to say about Trayvon. Like he talked as if he never met Trayvon. Unexpectedly. And we're here with someone that knows him best. We would like the exclusive and your support with Justice for Trayvon. How are you doing today? Good. How are you? I'm doing good. It's been a very emotional day for me, even as media. Could you tell the world who you are? Introduce yourself, please. I'm Javaris Fulton, Trayvon's older brother. Okay. I know that it's a very emotional. You just had an interview with People Magazine, and you've pretty much met hundreds of media today. Tell the world about Trayvon, who he was, just every, an everyday occurrence. What was something the world doesn't know about Trayvon, being, being with him and... Growing up with him, what was it like? Um, Trayvon was very, I don't know, he was a jokester. He liked uh, to laugh, as do I. We, uh, you know, uh, I guess he liked sports. But I guess all of you know that, though. He liked sports. Um... I don't know. He was a good kid. You know, got along with everybody. At the holidays and festivals or anything you would do, like funny little things, what do you remember? Like something, I know every day, you know, you're, you want to think of good things so you never forget the memories. But like a, a family memory, memory that you remember the most or something that just it keeps striking you, like something he said or something that surprised you that he told you even as a brother um mm. um mm. well which well i guess with the family wise you know our trips together we do a lot of family trips with everyone uh yeah, and the one that keeps popping in my head is the New York trip. We went to New York, uh, I guess that was two years ago, me, my mom, and my brother. And, uh, you know, she was tired from the day, so me and him went out. We went to this restaurant. We went to the movies, Wax Museum. We just ran all over New York. and. I like to think about that time. That was a good time. 
Like, this is a whole actor just playing a role just like the rest of these people are. Because Zimmerman just gave us just some confusing ass shit. The man said, my jacket went up. So some a ghost, a ghostly figure just lifted his jacket up. He didn't want to say, I lifted my jacket up. I pulled the gun out and shot him. He said, my jacket just went up. Not to mention the biggest part is is them is them telling you who told who to call the police. We already know the woman was on the phone with the police, supposedly, when the gunshot went off. Then she goes to say, we asked Zimmerman three times, was he okay? Each time he looked at me, didn't say anything until he finally said, call the police. And Zimmerman just told y'all we were tussling. Someone walked out of this door. Remember in the video, he said someone walked out of this door. He said, I start screaming, help, help me. I need help. It's coming out of Zimmerman's mouth. And then he said, the lady said, I'm going to call the police. And that's when I highlighted that part where he was like, I don't know what they did. He's like, what? You don't know what they did. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So clearly, bro, they're telling us lies. Like, we cannot believe not one single narrative from this story, which is exactly why I didn't do this video and try to present, like, every single theory because it's just going to lead to more confusion because that's what they want. That's what this was for. This was constructed and done by Freemasons. So we already know this ties back into every single case that's just like this one. Trayvon was the beginning not even a year later, they did the Kendrick Johnson one. Then a few years later, you know, and of course, we got a bunch of cases in between that one as well. But the ones that were like mass confusion, they were really like kind of all over the Internet and stuff was Trayvon. Kendrick might have not have got as much as he should have gotten. And then Kanika Jenkins, you know, and of course, there were other few, but those weren't as confusing. Those were like ones where, you know, um, we directly saw what happened when, you know, cops were killing um, certain black men. But, you know, regardless to say this was another one of those cases, this was almost like the beginning, the beginning of all this confusion, you know, type cases where they're just making it go super viral across the media and shit. So we know when it goes that viral, when it gets that much attention, this is a psyop. This is energy harvesting. This is Freemasons behind this kind of stuff. Y'all saw in the clip where I highlighted that they had Warner Bros at the top of the screen. That was a production, bro. That was a production. They were telling us what, what, what we wanted to hear, and they don't even get the stories right. So it kind of go to show you how much they do this shit right, into, right in your face. They don't even care to make sure the stories line up. It's on you to point the shit out, because even if you do point it out, it don't fucking matter. What you gonna do? You gonna... You gonna go find Trayvon? You gonna go reverse all of this shit and send Zimmerman to jail? No, no, you're not. Remember, he's fluish, so he, his ties, you know, this that that's why nothing basically happened to him, you know. And like I said, we still have to be open minded that all of this shit can be fake, bro. All of it, like y'all don't, all of it could be fake. I would never not, you know, consider that. I wouldn't dismiss it at all. That shit, it, we, we don't even know if we really looking at Trayvon Martin. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's how confusing all this shit is. And it's exactly why I do the videos the way that I do. So we can pinpoint the really, like, tough inconsistencies, point them out, and then we know who's behind it. And at the end of the day, that's really all that matters. Because we know it's some bullshit. So as long as we know that, we good. We can settle with the truth. You know? So, um... Enough of me talking right here at this point. Let's move on with the rest of the video. The eyewitnesses uh, have said they believe, uh, some of them believe it was your son calling out for help. Uh, no one saw him directly doing it uh, or, or, or saw, could say 100% for sure. You've heard the 911 call where you hear somebody calling out help. Do you believe that is your son's voice? Yes, I do. I believe that's Trayvon Martin. That's my baby's voice. Every mother knows their child, and that's his voice. And the fact that, that if that's true and he called out for help, what does that tell you? He was afraid for his life. 
uh, he he saw his death coming. He saw his death coming. The the screams got more franticer, and um, at that at that second that we heard the shot, the screams just completely stopped. He saw his death. He was pleading for his life. So you're saying if it was Zimmerman who was screaming for help, that might have continued after the shot. But yeah. the fact that after the shot there was no more scream for help, no more screaming whatsoever. It went completely silent. This 45-second 911 call captures the last moments of Trayvon Martin's life. Listen. The key and contentious question, who is screaming? Is it Trayvon Martin or is it neighborhood watchman George Zimmerman, the man accused of murdering him? So you think he's yelling help? Yes. All right, what is your... Police Department. Why is being recorded by Sean? Hey, we've had some break-ins in my neighborhood, and there's a real suspicious guy. Uh, it's Retrieve View Circle. Um, the best address I can give you is 111 Retrieve View Circle. This guy looks like he's up to no good, or he's on drugs or something. It's raining, and he's just walking around looking about. Okay, and this guy, is he white, black, or Hispanic? He looks black. Did you see what he was wearing? Yeah, a dark hoodie, like a gray hoodie, and he wore jeans or sweatpants and white tennis shoes. He didn't move. He was just staring. Oh, he was just walking around the area. at all the houses. Okay. And now he's just staring at me. Okay, and so it's one 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 retrieve you or one eleven? That's the that's the clubhouse. That's he's the clubhouse. Do you know what the house. he's near the clubhouse right now? Yeah, now he's coming towards me. Okay. He's got his hand in his waistband. And he's a black male. Okay. How old would you say he was? He's got a button on his shirt. Late teens. Late teens, okay. Mm-hmm. Something's wrong with him. Yeah. He's coming to check me out. He's got something in his hands. I don't know what his deal is. Okay, just let me know if he does anything, okay? Yeah, we got him on the way. Just let me know if this guy does anything else. Okay. Ah, these assholes, they always get away. Yeah. When you come to the clubhouse, you come straight in and make a left. Actually, you would go past the clubhouse. Okay, it says on the left-hand side from the clubhouse? And then you go in straight through the entrance, and then you make a left. Uh, yeah, you go straight in. Don't turn and make a left. Shit, he's running. He's running. Which way is he running? Uh, down towards the uh, other entrance of the neighborhood. Okay. Which entrance is that that he's heading towards? The back entrance. Are you following him? Yeah. Okay. We don't need you to do that. All right, sir, what is your name? George. He ran. All right, George, what's your last name? Zimmerman. And George, what's the phone number you're calling from? 407-435-2400. All right, George, we do have him on the way. Do you want to meet with the officer when they get out there? Yeah. All right, where are you going to meet with them at? Um, if they come in through the uh, gate, Tell him to go straight past the clubhouse and uh, straight past the clubhouse and make a left. And then they go past the mailboxes. You'll see my truck. Okay, what, what address are you parked in front of? Um, I don't know. It's a cut through, so I don't know the address. Okay, do you live in the area? Yeah, yeah. Well, what, what's your apartment number? 
It's a home. It's one nine five zero. Oh crap! I don't want to get that loud. I don't know where this kid is. Okay. Do you want to just be with him right near the mailboxes, then? Yeah, that's fine. All right, George. I'll let him know to meet you with the out there. Actually, okay? could you have him? Could you have him call me and I'll tell him where I'm at? Okay. Yeah, that's no problem. You need my number. Or you got it. Yeah, I, I got it. It's four zero seven four three five two four zero zero. Yeah, you got it. Okay, no problem. I'll let them know to call you when they're in the area. Thanks. You're welcome. All right, y'all. Now, y'all heard the 911 call that Zimmerman made on the night of February 26, 2012. Now, we're not going to act like things like that don't happen in real life. You know, when you get those, like, mighty warrior neighbors and shit that you know, make themselves like the neighborhood watchman and shit like that. Because, you know, you get in certain areas, you know, you'll get these nosy ass people that just call 911 just because a black person is in the area and he's looking a little suspicious and shit. We know we know those things happen in real life, you know. Um, but when I went back over and would just listen to that 911 call, um, just like any other 911 call that I give my attention to in these cases. It's like, all right, all right now. What? Let's just let's just imagine that this is, you know, hypothetically, let's just go with the fact that all of this shit really happened. You know, it happened exactly like Zimmerman told us. And it also happened how he explained it on, on the 911 call. Let's let's go with that theory. You know, then then we obviously come up with the questions of like, what would drive you to first follow the boy? You know, um, and and wait during the call he goes, oh oh he's coming toward me. He's coming toward me. Oh I don't know what this guy's on. He he looks like he has something in his hand, something on his waistband. Now from the jump, from the jump. He was already insinuating that this black boy, he has something on him. He's finna come up to me. Oh, he's looking at me now. I don't know what he has going on. He's already insinuating that something is about to happen. You have to listen to the context of the 911 call. Me, I listen in a sense of like, is this really happening? Like, while he's on the phone talking to the 911 operator, supposedly, is this really what's going on right now? Like, try to pitch yourself in the situation of you being the person calling 911. Would you really explain it that way? You know, would you really just so casually just call 911 and just be talking to this man on the phone? Like, oh, I don't know what this guy doing. Oh, shit, he coming up to me right now. And then, oh, oh, he's running. He's running. And then you get out your car. You can hear the door shut. Literally, you can hear the door shut. You get out the car. You start jogging down the street to see where he's going. Like a whole movie. Then the then the, the operator um, says, are you following him? You know, we don't need you to do that. And he continues to follow him. And then somehow, some way, which I'm going to assume it's edited, the 911 call ends and all all within a span of a few minutes, the 911 call ends. He ends up getting into the tussle with Trayvon. You get the other witnesses that are like on the other side of the building. Who say, you know, we, we already went over that. Who saw who say they saw it and blah, blah, blah. And had all these mixed, confused stories. So you get all of this within a span. All of this happened after seven o'clock. I think it was all in between like 7.05 to like 7.30. He was actually pronounced dead by the police. And notice that number seven. He was 17 years old. Everything happened in the seven o'clock hour. And if I'm not mistaken, the verdict that was placed on Zimmerman happened on the seventh as well. I may have to fact check that and put it in the video. I know it was a bunch of sevens involved in this case. So I find that to be 
really odd just the way that the phone call was made and you got to understand where I'm coming from I'm coming from a place of just I'm trying to listen for like I'm trying to listen for it to be authentic you know what I'm saying like it's hard to really describe and explain what I'm listening for you would have to be like inside of my mind (laughs) you know what I'm saying um but y'all know how I am about these 911 calls man like most of this stuff just don't make sense it don't add up because in real life I just couldn't imagine something going that way like I said we know these calls happen nosy mighty warrior neighbors they do this all the time but most of the time it's not they're not finna follow whoever they're looking at and they damn show, you know, w- within a span of like 15 to 20 minutes, all of this shit happened. You end up murdering him and them and boom, you know what I'm saying? Now you get a super viral case all across the damn news. So my whole point about that, that 911 call, once again, man, we just can't believe everything that we hear. You know, um, like I said in the beginning of the video, all of this shit could have been planned. This, this to me... Honestly, I feel like it was a huge Hollywood show. It was a hoax. You know, a good percentage of me believe all of it was fake. All of it was so we can pull, grab on your heart. You know, that's why you hear that gunshot. You hear her screaming and they emphasize they, they, they actually had a huge thing going on, bringing in investigators in so they can find out who actually did the scream. Ultimately, to just say they can't prove who was screaming, even though the, um, the, the scream stopped after the gunshot went off. So that's why I feel like everything was just a huge show. You know, all the way from a, from the dad being a Freemason and them setting this up the way that it went. You know? I I don't think I saw any any Trayvon Martin funeral pictures, you know? I don't think we saw him after that. It's a huge show, man. And these people are highly connected, you know? And it gets very political. There are definitely higher agendas here at hand that that happened with that case you know shit that is deeper than just the surface of okay george zimmerman killed a young black man you know it goes deep it goes all the way up to the top all the way up to the top this shit was orchestrated by highly ranking freemasons and that's the way that this stuff goes man um so we're gonna get to the last clips of the video i'll come back wrap everything up so y'all check this out. y'all we're gonna wrap the video up that was the Trayvon Martin sacrifice video and I hope y'all enjoyed that video and now I'll just use this time to kind of go over the numbers that I was just talking about and the fact that Trayvon's Martin was um his dad was a Freemason Now, I didn't throw this early into the video because mostly all of you are aware that he was a Freemason. Um, There are tons of pictures online that prove he was a Freemason. So, you know, I didn't want to really, you know, just throw it out there early in the video. I kind of wanted y'all to just be able to focus on the case. And, you know, since most of you already know he's a Freemason, you know, and these are just a couple of pictures that I found online when you do just kind of like a simple search of um of the dad. You know, I already showed y'all this in the video of them basically showing their allegiance 
to the one eye God, you know, to the Freemasonic elite that run this world. You know, um, this was this was an old picture off of his Facebook. Um, I don't know if these pictures are up anymore on his Facebook as this was about 10 to 11 years ago where people, you know, um, well, obviously in 2000, um, 2013 when it happened. Um, no, I mean, 2012 when it happened, they went and, um, you know, dug through all his old pictures and they found all this stuff. So, you know, obviously this guy, he definitely has like some really like demonic pictures on his Facebook at that time, you know, basically showing what he represents. You know, I would, you know, this would be depicted as the devil on top of a pillar, you know, with the Freemasonic symbol and the G pointing downward with the all seeing eye at the top of the picture. And here's just more pictures uh, that was online. Him with his fellow brothers. Standing with the Mason um with the Mason symbol right above his head, not above the other ones, above his head, done on purpose. Then him 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 again standing in between the two pillars. Him with his another brother. You know, so I'm sure a lot of y'all have already seen some of these pictures. You know, which is why I didn't really um which is why I didn't really show these early in the video, like I said. And what I wanted to talk about, um, as far as the numbers go, that are kind of surrounded around this case, as far as the death date of Trayvon adding up to 13, and as far as the verdict coming out, basically um, acquitting Zimmerman of the charge on July 7th, no, July 13th it was. It was the seventh month, the 13th day of 2013. And then remember, I also pointed out Trayvon Martin was 17. Um, they used the seventh month of the year when they, can, um, when they basically gave Zimmerman the acquittal with also another seven come in the time that Trayvon was pronounced dead. Rather, it was exactly 7.30 or not. It was in the seven o'clock hour. So you get those three sevens. You also get three number 13s. The three sevens would basically equal to 21, obviously, which is another sacred number to the occult. And the thing about it is, if we even go, if we go all the way back to basically, let's say we go all the way back to when the Illuminati was started, right? Because that was like the first big group of, you know, the elite, as far as we know, coming together, you know, to the public and having like a name, the Illuminati, you know, elitist group. So they were basically founded by Adam Westhop. And this is to give you a general idea of how the occult uses numbers to shape history because they really believe in the power of these numbers. This is to give you an idea. Adam Westhop, he started the Illuminati on May 1st. He chose the fifth month of the year and the first day of the month so it can equal to the number six. May 1st, 5-1. He also chose 1776 because one plus seven plus seven plus six equals 21. You guessed it. A sacred number to the occult. He already had that knowledge and that belief that everything has to be done accordingly on like, you know, a numerological scale, you know, on a number scale. So it goes to show you how deep they actually use these numbers to basically shape history. Everything, everything is, you know, everything is numerical, you know, it's all done down to the T planned perfectly so they can harvest energy and complete the rituals that they do to the public. 
Hence why we got the number seven so much, the number of completion in this case. And which, like I also said in the text, the number seven is basically used as a form of mockery. You know? Um, and y'all could, you know, if y'all wanted to go back and do more research on those numbers, you can. Um, and definitely throughout time, you know, as we just continue to do more videos, you know, um, I'll go deeper and explain more with what certain numbers mean. But most of y'all are already aware, you know, because y'all do a lot of this research and y'all do a lot of watching videos on your own. So I figured I'll just kind of give you an example of how deep it goes. You know, um, so just to kind of wrap this entire video up. You know, I won't keep it going on too much longer because once again, I feel like um, everything I've showed, you know, pretty much gives you a really good picture of this, you know, being complete bullshit. A lot of this shit we can't believe. We definitely can't believe the narrative that they gave us, you know, because they show us what they want to show us. You know, we, we seeing what they want us to see. Y'all already know that. And so hopefully, you know, bringing this back around for the ones that maybe didn't catch certain things in that case, you know, because you might have been, you know, emotionally drawn to it, you know, because that's what they like to do. That's really the entire purpose. They want you to be so emotional tied into it that you don't even see that this is all fabricated. It's all some bullshit. They acting. I know y'all saw the brother. The brother, that that was that was ridiculous. That was ridiculous. Ain't no way that's his damn brother. Ain't no way. Ain't no way. Or either the fact that it's the other way around and Trayvon Martin doesn't even exist. You know what I'm saying? It got to be one of the two. You know what I'm saying? Because that, that was weird. Like, it was weird. Like, why was a reporter even so close? I swear she could have kissed him. Like, she was close. Like, her body was on his body. Like, that was a very awkward-ass interview. You know what I'm saying? So, man, you know, like I said, hopefully, you know, bringing this back around will make some of y'all see what was really going on with this case. You know, because I know a lot of people were very emotionally tied into it because they thought it was just some typical racial type of thing that they constantly push through the media. Y'all know they just want to, you know, divide and conquer. That's it. You know what I'm saying? They, it'll always be that way. They'll always try to make things out to be black and white, you know? Um, that Hegelian dialectic, you know what I'm saying? It's 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 always gonna be that way, you know. So that's that, man. That's the Trayvon Martin sacrifice video. Um, obviously today is not Sunday, <laughs> but you know, it's a holiday, so I'm sure most of y'all are just chilling right now. And uh, that's that, man. So I hope y'all enjoyed the video. I hope y'all having a good day. I will be coming back with another video this week. And y'all already know what's going on. It's Black Balloon. And I'm going to see y'all soon. I'm out.